it is live now pankita ma'am we can start uh, good morning all of you uh, so here we are presenting mr yash patel formulation scientist and pure private i am pure limited uh, mr yash patel is having approximately 20 years of uh, r&d experience uh, his specialization is a uh, to formulation development and he has worked with a uh, uh, pharma giant of uh, bdr and currently he is associated with mcure pharmaceuticals limited uh, he is uh, working with a uh, solid oral so he is associated with uh, taking trial batches of the tablet as well as capsule formulation then the scale up and the documentary part so today uh, mr yash will be taking the session and that is specially on project management So I welcome uh, Mr. Yash Patel to address our uh, audience. So, yes, hi, Tim. Uh, thank you, Pankita, uh, Madam, for uh, giving me such a lovely uh, introduction. So, uh, there are many fields in the pharmaceutical industry uh, that. Uh, deals with the various aspects of for developing the dosage form uh, manufacturing the dosage form ensuring the quality uh, there are managements who decide whether to proceed with the projects or not whether to pursue and uh, launch the products in the market there are launching teams uh, that deals with uh, product launches uh, and there are commercial teams who explore the corporate opportunities uh, but uh, in in all of this uh, scenario uh, some somewhere in between uh, we we need an 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 link that connects all of this so one of such link is in project management and uh, today uh, i'll be presenting the role and uh, actual requirements of project management in the field of uh pharmaceutical industry give me a moment because of some technical issues at my end i am unable to load the presentation so give me a moment so anybody who has joined has any idea about uh, what is project management no actually so, you are Uh, the other audience cannot connect you directly on this. Uh, there are only panelists in this session. So they okay. can see the comments in Facebook. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, to start with uh, project management, uh, I will say project management. Uh, is uh, divided into the two terms uh, first is project and the second is management so project is basically a component and that a commercial organization takes up uh, to uh, achieve its financial goals uh, but it's not an easy uh, statement to give uh, just by saying that okay uh, we have a project and uh, we'll finalize it it requires miniature planning budgeting uh, and working upon it uh, constantly communicating so that an uh, project becomes an uh, successful adventure Just give me a moment. I'll start with the presentation. I 
some issues with the Microsoft. Madam, can you help me with uh, how to share the presentation? Hello. Yes, below your screen, there is one green button that is uh, share screen. Start that. Raise that. Green share. Button. Yes, there is a document. Yes, uh -huh. spot it. Thank you so much. Sir, you can share the PPT with Pankita or me so that we can share the, it, it will work. Okay, 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 I'll do that then. Just let me know when it is uh, resolved yes, so that I can yes, yes. allow you to share this screen. Okay, so I'm for now sharing the yes. I have sent it to Pankita. Okay. Thank you so much. And, uh, sorry for a bit of an hiccup. Uh, it's okay, I'm... sir. There are always some technical glitches in this big world of digital uh, uh, revolution. That's perfectly. Uh, yes, I'm. I mean, it is a joy to use a new phone, but not to have an app installed is a curse. So that is what has happened to me. Uh, I just bought a new phone yesterday, and things were not on the phone. So that is why. Hello. Okay, so uh, should I share the screen? Yes, Pankita, ma'am. Go ahead. Yes, okay. okay. Uh, is it visible to everyone? Yes. Okay. So uh, it is okay. not in slideshow yes. mode. Uh, yes, yes. I am doing that. I am doing that. Okay. Yes, you can yes. start. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you, Pankita, madam. Uh, thank you, Lima, madam, for aiding me with the presentation. Uh, so my voice is audible right now. I'm I'm audible uh, to everyone. Yeah. Perfectly. Yeah, okay, thank you so much. So today we'll be discussing about the project management, the juxtaposition in the pharmaceutical affairs. So we have talked, I mean, as we all are um, belonging to a pharma background, we all are aware about uh, the pharmaceutical as an industry, that uh, uh, it is an industry. We all know about uh, uh, the industry, but we don't, we have never, given an in-depth perception uh, about uh, what are its affairs. I mean, uh, on what uh, on levels, uh, how it functions uh, and where the management uh, takes place. I mean, management is not just someone who uh, makes the decision. Uh, we as a human have grown to a level where 
every individual who is taking or participating into a uh, day to day function acts as a manager they have to make small choices that builds up uh, to make a decision uh, so uh, project management deals with the affairs and not with the industry per se uh, so today's content will discuss about all the affairs and practices and principles and methodologies uh, that affects the deliverables of pharmaceutical industry uh, so today's content will be project management its principles its tools its practices pharmaceutical industry and its affairs uh, so what are these affairs we, we are going to discuss about so i have listed the domains the research domain manufacturing domain marketing sales and distribution domain commercialization domain uh, and uh, finally we'll conclude with uh, at what juncture this project management and uh, pharmaceutical affairs go hands in hand and uh, uh, why it is into the juxtaposition so before starting the uh, discussion about what is project management uh, i would like to uh, 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 highlight that india has seen uh, one of the best project manager uh, in the books of history uh, i hope uh, from the cartoon uh, presented on the slide we would have guessed but if not i would say uh, the person is birbal um, i don't know if you know what are the qualities of what is what is what is the quality uh, birbal had or how birbal got recognized as one of the ministers of akbar but uh, uh, birbal has all the skills uh, that a project manager required he was wise he was tactful he was empathetic uh, he was smart uh, and he was practical so uh, he was actually aware about the current affairs and then also he can uh he has all the ability uh, to just uh, you know uh, make things simple to understand to a person who is uh, king king of freelance so india has already seen uh, one of the best project managers uh, in my view that is Bir. so what is project management project management is the process of leading the work of a team to achieve all the project goals within the given constraint throughout the project cycle uh, there are lots of words that has been repeated like project uh, cycle uh, management so what is a project project is given set of actions to create a deliverable deliverable can be a process deliverable can be a service deliverable can be a product uh, even within the pharmaceutical industry domain all these activities are required and all these activities uh, needs to have an approach a streamlined approach which cannot be predefined because every every molecule every process has its own constraint has its own limitation has its own pros and cons so it cannot be generalized and that is where uh, project management is comes into the picture so as we all know there are various branches uh, that is deals within the pharmaceutical domain uh, and all these branches works with each other they, they are called as in cross functional teams so these cross functional teams needs to have a common platform to talk about it. that is that common platform is desk of the project manager uh, moving forward what are the various phases of project management i mean what is the project life cycle or what are the phases of project uh, uh, that a project manager come across so uh, every every project starts with the initiation uh, it initiation means uh, converting a concept into a practice or a product basically a deliverable which is the need of a society of an organization or of an or of an individual it can be anything but it is converting an idea or concept into a deliverable so at the initiation stage 
uh, lots of thinking is required, lots of understanding is required, lo lots of practical inputs are required. Uh, from the initiation stage, uh, project progresses to the planning stage. Once you are assured that you want to conceptualize this idea based on uh, the brainstorming, you plan the activities. So what is planning? Planning is estimating that this concept will require this much amount of resource, men, material, money, and time. Uh, so these estimations uh, cumulatively is called as planning. Uh, once the planning has been done, uh, we uh, progress towards the execution. At this stage, the project manager uh, takes a seat back and starts to monitor the things. That stage is execution. Project manager or project management never comes into the picture to take action, to make a decision. They always serve as an observer to the process. They always serve as a facilitator, but this facilitator has some special qualities, some special uh, rights uh, to align the project on the track. So at the time of execution, project management takes a back seat and aids as a facilitator. Uh, but when we say they aids as a facilitator, they just don't stop observing the things. They start monitoring the things. They start reporting the things. They start correcting the things. Uh, and this process is the uh, longest part of any uh, project, execution and monitoring. And execution and monitoring goes in hand in hand. Uh, once the execution starts, you start the monitoring. You take up the feedbacks. You understand the risk. You understand the pitfall. You try to mitigate the pitfall. You reach to a stage where you can actually forecast whether there is an, the project will be a successful endeavor or a project will be a failure. So when, when you come to that stage, project reaches its closing stage. Uh, and at the closing stage, uh, you analyze the outcomes of the project. See, project management is not a static field that you have started a project and uh, you have ended the project. It is a very dynamic activity. It is a very dynamic process uh, where at every stage of project, you imbibe the learning, you take up the learning, you implement the learning, and you uh, communicate those learnings. Uh, we cannot say that one only one out of these activities is important. All three activities are equally important to deliver a successful project. So like any branch, project management also has its set of principles. These principles are the standards, current standards, I would say, not just the standards uh, that drives this project manager. Project managers are someone who, who guides the project, who takes the ownership of the uh, project's timeline. So these principles are very essential uh, that needs to be kept in mind while you act as a project manager or while you implement your project management uh, office uh, in practice to any corporate. So I would say this is this principle has evolved from five or six or one or two to 12. Earlier, it was very process driven field. Uh, I mean, project managers were thinking only and only about the processes. Uh, there were no uh, emotions placed into the consideration. There was no human factors placed into the consideration. But over the period of time, uh, these uh, principles uh, have come into the picture based on the experiences of various project managers. So these 12 principles are uh, being a steward. So what steward stands here for? Stewards means a leader who has all the authorities except making a decision. So why it is essential? Because when you have an cumulative understanding of any activity, you have knowledge, you have an um, insight into the uh, progress of that uh, activity. Uh, and it gives you an automatical uh, anonymity and the power to drive the things. But whether it will be a successful or not, it has to be come from the stakeholders 
who are doing the activity. And that is why a project manager has to act as a steward. Uh, even if you have 20 years of experience and you know uh, that this actions will lead to failure, you have to take a seat back and you have to guide them. You have to discuss it with them. You have to uh, communicate to the stakeholders that these are the pitfalls. Maybe with the change of the time, standards have changed and what has been perceived as failure is now not an, a failure. So a project manager has to be a steward which is, uh, who is diligent, respectful and caring. Create a collaborative project team environment. So since the beginning, I'm insisting on a thing that there are stakeholders. So stakeholders are domain experts or domain doers who have set of skills to carry out any project. But it doesn't mean that they have entire and vast understanding of a project as a wholesome activity. Uh, like they just want to play their role and they want to get out. So when such uh, stakeholders participate into the project activity, uh, a collaborative environment needs to be created because there will, I'm sure there will be difference of opinions. There are difference of availability of resources. So a project manager, manager always ensures that there is a collaborative project team environment. Just creating environment is not sufficient. It has to be a feedback driven uh, environment. And that is why a project manager has to engage with the stakeholder wherever and at whatever the level possible, because every organization works on a hierarchy basis and the activities are assigned to every individual uh, based on their role, based on their capability and uh, based on the requirement of organization. So even though if a project manager has a free hand, to interact with any stakeholder. They have to engage with stakeholder effectively so that project progresses uh, and should not interact with uh, stakeholders as an owner, but again, as a steward. Focus on value. When you work with so much and so many of people and cross-functional teams with different ideologies, different goals and different skills, uh, they things can go haywire. I mean, a person or two may dominate depends upon the requirement of a situation, but a project manager should always focus on value that uh, it, the activity, the project has to be a value driven project. Percentage can vary, but it should always be driven by the values. Values should not go out of the focus while you are designing the project or while you are executing the project. When we say that value should not uh, be, uh, you know, omitted uh, system interactions needs to be uh, ensured because every stakeholder, every doer has observations. They may have a previous learnings. They may have learned something new uh, from uh, these projects or the work they are doing. So this, uh, these outcomes needs to be taken into the consideration. So every interaction, every response, whether it is a group meeting, whether it is an individual event that is reported, or whether there is a pitfall that has been discussed, every minor interaction has to be recognized, has to be evaluated, has to be responded. In situations, a leadership behavior has to be demonstrated because it has been assumed that a leader is someone who has all the authorities and who has all the capabilities, which is not true. Uh, sometimes a leader born out of the needs and project manager who is observing uh, needs of the project knows that this is a gap where a leadership quality is required. So wherever required, a project manager has to exert a leadership behavior, tailored based on context. So uh, just now we have discussed about the system interactions. So the interactions are so frequent, so obvious, and so much to an extent that it can create a hodgepodge of thoughts. So out of those hodgepodge, a project manager has to uh, you know, pick thoughts or processes or interactions or actions uh, and tailor it so that those thoughts processes drive the project towards the success. So tailoring, I mean, the 
selection should uh, meet the project's need and drive it towards the success. Build quality into the process and deliverables. When there is so much of interaction, so much of thinking, so much of collaboration, quality may go out of the question uh, at any stage. So a project manager has to ensure that a process or a deliverable meet its standards. Let me give you an example. You cannot uh, label any shoe a Reebok shoe. A Reebok shoe has to be built in a Reebok environment. Uh, Reebok has specific set of procurement that needs to be procured from specific source. They have specific processes to mold those shoes, to sew the, those shoes and create a quality product. Once that quality product is manufactured, tested and assured that it meets all the standard uh, that Reebok has established, then they label it as a Reebok. You cannot take up just any shoe from the market and uh, label it as a Reebok, right? So that is what ensuring a quality is. Navigate complexity. There are times when there are heated interactions. There are times when a failure is uh, unprecedented. I mean, you have to accept that this is going to fail. Or there are times when there is a crunch of funds, crunch of resource. Because of one person's mistake, entire team is suffering. These situations are complex and it can get even complex. Uh, like just now, many operations have started and a pandemic has hit. So that complexity is beyond uh, anybody's control. So in this complex situation, a project manager has to navigate because a project manager never can take a decision, but project manager has to navigate the team, the stakeholders to a safe harbor where they can continue whenever we have a chance to uh, uh, move to the uh, project success. Optimize the risk responses. Whenever you start the activity, you start to see that there are risks associated with the activities. And this risk needs to be addressed. Maybe you already have done the damage, but you take up it as a learning and you implement it into the next project. But those risks needs to be optimized. Embrace adaptability and resiliency. Adaptability, we are living in a constantly changing world. Uh, needs are changing on daily basis. Uh, mobiles are, you know, upgrades to next level on daily basis. So it doesn't happen by itself. Humans gets involved into uh, updating the world and you cannot take up all the changes at a time. So adaptability to the environment, to the process, to the needs is very essential. Even projects get affected by uh, change. Suppose you are working uh, with foreign lands and uh, uh, you are paying in a dollar. So when you started a project, the price of the dollar was 80, 89 rupees to a dollar. And now it has, when you have reached to the completion, that cost has changed because the pricing of dollar has changed from 89 uh, rupees a dollar to 94 rupees a dollar. So that is an adaptability. You have to force in these changes. Like th there is this cost variable exists. Resiliency, I mean, failures are part of work, but it's not everybody's cup of tea to uh, take up the failures and accept that we have failed and move on from there. So that resiliency has to be there in, in, in project management practices. Enable change to achieve the envisioned future stage. So when, when we combine all the 11 principles above, uh, it gives us a foresight into the change. Uh, these 11 values highlighted above, they are discussing a change, that changes are inevitable, changes are happening on daily basis, changes are, are happening on every second. So when a project is taking or commenced, uh, it has to reach a closing stage. And during these uh, project stages, it has to reach a closing with maximum uh, success possible out of uh, the invested investment that has been made into the project. So this can only be done if when success, failures, outcomes, learnings, everything has been put into the practice uh, to yield maximum output. And then and then only you can forecast 
the success or failure uh, based on a current change. So this were, those were the 12 principles of project management. Uh, so whenever there is a field, there are tools. Uh, so these are the project management tools. There are enormous tools available uh, to a project manager. Uh, IT, as I've said, it's constantly changing. I mean, every second you will see a new software been launched into the industry. So there are softwares available to develop softwares. Uh, there are softwares available to manage the project, to aid a project manager. Uh, and th those are very complex tools. Those tools can be used only after you have certain exposure to the project management practices. Uh, not to, I mean, uh, end it there. I will highlight few of the tools, uh, very basic tools, but very essential tools of project management. Uh, it will uh, give us an idea that how project management practices are actually taking place. So first tool is project initiation. So whenever you brainstorm something, it is a standard practice to put it on a paper. Now, when there are multiple projects ongoing in an organization, putting things on a paper, hey, I will not help because it will represent individual thoughts. It may be perceived, it may not be perceived by a man, by a manager, by an entrepreneur who is, uh, you know, taking a decision of investment. So the project initiation forms are standardized way of, uh, you know, projecting your uh, 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 concepts or ideas uh, so that it can be conveyed to someone who is making a conscious decision to convert this concept into the product or deliverable. So this is one of the form uh, which is been used by a contract uh, service provider. Uh, it has outlined some of the details like who is the client, who is client lead, what is the name of the project, who is the project manager assigned, uh, what are they are expecting, what is client is expecting out of uh, this project and what is our capability to you know deliver so on and so forth. So it also discuss about the timeline. Uh, it also discusses about the budget, that what is the budget? Uh, how much uh, amount of money you are willing to spare uh, to accomplish it to the successful level? Uh, when, when, when we have said that budget and time, uh, the second tool deals with the visualization of the timelines. See, uh, it is, it is, it is uh, a commodity. Time is a commodity that everybody has. And everybody utilizes to their will. Uh, assigning a task to someone is not essentially means that that person or that task will be completed in the similar fashion what was anticipated. So there has to be a common platform uh, where progress can be presented, can be communicated to the stakeholders and uh, uh, summarize uh, to the management uh, and summarize uh, and can be kept a track of. So the next tool is Gantt charts and uh, Gantt charts with work breakdown structure. So Gantt charts are nothing but a simple bar graph with respect to time of a project's progress. Uh, to what level uh, the project has progressed, where it has been started, where it has reached and uh, where it is going, whether the next phase should start or not. So what is this work breakdown structure then? See, work breakdown structure is nothing but a division of work based on the higher hierarchy. Like there is a ground level work that needs to be done by a ground level employee. A manager has certain tasks that needs to be accomplished by a manager. And the senior management has certain tasks that needs to be performed by senior manager. And those tasks are interlinked, uh, I mean, when uh, activity A is completed, person B has to start activity B. Uh, many a times it goes parallelly, depends upon the needs of the project. But, but, but these complex things uh, can only be presented in a simplified form with the help of GAN chart. Believe me, it is a boon for every project manager to have a GAN chart tool. Uh, uh, the last tool that I am uh, uh, discussing about to discuss is project uh, project closure form. Uh, so uh, we have seen that in during the uh, phases of the uh, uh, project management, 
when you execute and monitor you imbibe lots of information you gain lots of knowledge uh, from the process some of it is true for the time some of it is not true for the given period of time but but when we conclude to a successful outcome those learnings uh, must have changed those learnings have those learnings must have changed so those learnings needs to be reported those learnings needs to be communicated those learnings needs to be recorded why first it gives you an idea about uh, what has actually happened uh, against what was perceived so it gives you an idea about what was the goal and what has been achieved how to and what extent it is it has been successful uh, it it may be successful to 70% it may have been successful to 80% it may have been successful to 100% then you must know that why it has achieved those success whether the investments were been made on the right time whether the uh, third party uh, service provider that is been uh, uh, selected was an appropriate third party uh, th third party service provider uh, so on and so forth so those learnings are summarized in a project closure form and it uh, details about like all the activities that has been taken up uh, so having said that uh, that uh, there are phases of project management there are uh, tools that that is been uh, you know implemented to uh, coming uh, i mean to uh, perform the activities of project management but what is the practice i mean how to uh, exert the project management so what are the methodologies or what is the cumulative knowledge that has been derived till date uh uh by managing the projects so there are three fundamental ways of managing a project or there are three standard practices uh, uh out of them first is adaptive project management see i have said that project is very dynamic uh you you may have seen an hindrance and uh, you must have stopped your project at that stage but you can uh, continue from there that stage and lead it to a success it may be a 70% of success then what is assumed but commercially it's very rewarding so this adaptiveness comes from uh, uh, understanding of surrounding that what is the requirement of market uh, whether the product will do good in the market or not like the photo over here that shows that people uh, playing a basketball in a wheelchair so they were very good basketball players but because of some reasons they were Uh, you know out of context and they lose their legs so what is been done a group of such 10 people come together and they have decided that we'll play basketball on a wheelchair so their wish was fulfilled so the task that they intend to do was to play basketball they are now playing so that is what adaptiveness is uh, the next way of or next practice in the project management is conservative project management or waterfall project management so why it is called a waterfall or conservative project management it is a step wise process uh, like uh, you you take the first step you take the you take the second step you take the third step uh, wherever in those steps you see a hindrance you go back to the first step and you again start from the scratch so this is a very safe way of exiting a project but there are high chances that uh, you will lose the market advantage at the same time when we say that adaptive project management is better uh, that is also not true because in adaptive project management you may adopt to a project management practice which ultimately leads to a failure and there are no comebacks from it so the current practice that is been practiced in the field of project management is hybrid project management it is combination of waterfall or conservative project management and adaptive project management. so what is the advantage of this uh, hybrid project management hybrid project management uh, enables uh, stakeholders and project managers uh, a vast amount of vast amount of freedom uh, in in terms of taking decisions in terms of taking uh, in terms of taking uh, actions uh, in terms of allocating the resource so currently 60% of project managers 
practice this hybrid project management practices. So our goal is to align our field of project management with the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, and uh, I will highlight as we all are pharmacists, we are pretty much aware that what are the affairs of pharmaceutical industry. So first affair is research. Research comes from science and knowledge uh, and intellectual property. It generates the intellectual property. But even research in pharmaceutical industry is governed by the government bodies. So research is basically conceptualize uh, the deliverable. This is the conception stage of the process. Research is initiation of the project. Once the project is initiated and it reaches to a stage where it can be scalable, it reaches to a manufacturing stage. And what are the, I mean, components of this manufacturing? Manufacturing facility, operations, analysis, and uh, quality control and quality assurance. All this activity of manufacturing is pretty much controlled by the government body. We all are aware about Drug and Cosmetic Act 21 CFR and the guidelines that has been outlined by EMEA uh, and uh, other regulatory bodies. Uh, then commercialization or commercial aspects. So this is an hybrid between research and manufacturing. See, commercial aspects in any pharmaceutical industry comes into the picture when there are certain advantages associated with it. So what are these commercial activities? Licensing, merger and acquisition, contract manufacturing, and contract research. We'll see on the later on slides that what are these commercial activities are and how they contributed and uh, what are their roles. So marketing, distribution, and sales. We see marketing is an, you know, a bit of a field which is uh, kind of a downgraded field, which is not true. Uh, it is because of marketing. Today, we have lots of information in hand about the products, uh, uh, inputs from the doctors who are the actual end users of the product. Because, see, the patient doesn't know what they are taking and what they are feeling. They just know that something has happened to them. But what has happened, how that has happened, uh, that can only be imbibed by a medical practitioner. So this scientific preaching is a two-way process. A doctor preaches the medical practice, uh, uh, medical representative, and medical representative counters back and preaches back uh, the experiences of the other medical practitioners or what has been the study's outcomes. Supply chain management. Once the products goes into the market, it needs to be distributed, and that can only be done by supply chain management. Product life cycle management is, uh, you know, once a product is been start to sell. Uh, it ends up, enters into the cycle and it continues into the market till the next best option is available into the field. Uh, and sales. So sales is selling uh, this medicine to the uh, uh, patients or population for whom it is being uh, designed to uh, consume. So we'll take on individual bit of pharmaceutical office. So what is research? Research is concept. A concept that a chemical entity can be used safety, safely and effectively to mitigate any disease uh, with meeting all the regulatory requirements that has been outlined by various agencies. So aim of development is to develop a new chemical entity or a new biological entity. It can be a development of a generic formulation or an over-the-counter product. So research mainly deals with such uh, 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 three, pharmaceutical research mainly deals with these three parts, a new chemical entity or new biological entity, uh, generic formulation and over-the-counter medicine. So where these concepts come from? It comes from the individual research at academic level or at an organizational level. It is being reported into the articles or patterns are being filed uh, to, you know, uh, secure this knowledge or concepts. So what research wings comes under the uh, pharmaceutical affairs? Chemistry. Uh, without chemistry, we cannot synthesize anything. Uh, and a synthesis can only be monitored if an analytical activity or analytical procedure is in place. So both this analytical activity and synthesis goes hand in hand. Then comes the polymer. Then comes this polymer. Uh, science into the picture. Excipients that are being used in pharmaceutical industry uh, are mainly polymers. Um, 
So these polymers, their synthesis, their safety, their efficacy, their true and track record is equally important in pharmaceutical research. Let it be an NC, let it be an uh, uh, generic formulation. Uh, the chemistry always plays a critical role. The next uh, wing or domain that contributes into the research is biology, pathology, or pharmacology. So all these are interconnected uh, and uh, current practices are disease modeling and disease progression. So when, when, when you conceptualize that a chemical will work uh, into a human body, uh, uh, it has been uh, simulated in silico, it has been uh, simulated in uh, uh, animal organs, it has been simulated in healthy volunteers. So how it is and different from uh, clinical trial? See, modeling is nothing but a jargon of statistics that uh, uh, predicts the probability that disease will progress. Uh, uh, in a, disease is progressing in this fashion and uh, these are the chances that this molecule will uh, 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 will be effective and safe enough uh, in a human or animals. So pharmacokinetics is again actual monitoring of uh, what drug does to the body, uh, how it's distributed, how it's uh, excreted, and uh, what time it spends into the body, whether it is doing any uh, damage to the body or not, or what are the concentrations uh, that doesn't affect uh, the human body. So all this knowledge comes from the clinical practices. See, developing a molecule and proving that it is safe and effective is a one thing, but uh, giving it to the large population is entirely a different story because things are affected by humidity, environment, food habits, and many other things. So only uh, a regional medical practitioner has information that how this new chemical entity is behaving. Once these research activities are concluded, uh, these chemical entities enters into this uh, manufacturing stage. This is a flow diagram that shows that how an API is synthesized. Uh, this is just an abstract, but see, uh, the, the variety of ingredients that are participating into the synthesis of FPI. There is a catalytic reactor, there are a number of solvents, number of fruits, uh, even two reactions are, you know, uh, meeting at a point to generate an intermediate C. Uh, there is a scavenging column that is taken out the waste or uh, process uh, slower or anything that is actually hindering the uh, chemical reaction. So synthesis of FPI is equally crucial. Once you have a chemical process that can quantify uh, amount to a scalable level, that then and then only that process can be uh, taken up. So it is also a very dynamic field. Uh, there are number of ways to synthesize in FPI and it cannot be you know, restricted to just one or two synthesis. So it is very dynamic. Once an API is synthesized, it has to be given uh, to the humans in a uh, dosage form. So these dosage forms are titrated uh, during the clinical trials and they are uh, tailored uh, to the human body's needs of safety and efficacy. It has to be effective and it has to be safety. So these dosage forms include solid orals, injectables, ointments, depends upon the disease progression uh, site of action has been designed and formulation is designed according. So all these operations needs to be monitored, uh, needs to be validated. And those operations can only be validated uh, using an analytical, appropriate analytical technique. It can be mass, it can be NMR, it can be HPLC, it can be UV. Uh, you name a thing, uh, any analytical technology can uh, help uh, with the uh, uh, monitoring this uh, safety and efficacy. So next stage, once the product is manufactured, uh, it needs to be marketed. So marketing, as I've stated, that based on the scientific uh, evidence, features the product for its safety and efficacy to medical practitioners, ensures supply to the wholesaler and retailers to maintain the brand image. Marketing is not just delivering the product, but creating a brand. 
uh, it also receives the uh, constant feedback from the prescriber. Once the product is marketed, it needs to be continuously distributed uh, from laboratory or manufacturing unit to the wholesaler and distributor in final form. The distribution or supply chain management ensures the timely distribution at the right place and in right condition. Sales. Uh, sales is something uh, selling it to the needy. Uh, it requires a continuous presence to uh, make medicines available uh, to the patient population. It may seem that uh, an easy task, but it is not. And it is, it is a uh, wonderful practice, particularly abroad. In India, now PharmEasy and uh, other uh, medical chains are on rise. Uh, but it is uh, well adopted and well accepted in Western countries. So commercialization. Commercialization is nothing but uh, taking the advantage of market uh, to maximize the financial uh, benefits of uh, selling this pharmaceutical product. So contract research and contract manufacturing. Uh, it is not wise to invest on uh, research at every possible equipment because equipments are costly. Research itself is costly. So when shed activities are performed, it reduces cost drastically. So for some of the activities, we out license or we, uh, you know, contract out this research work. So why outsourcing happens? It happens because of lack of capability, sometimes because of lack of time, and sometimes because of lack of knowledge. Same goes true for contract manufacturing. We have money. You have a skilled person, but you don't have equipment. Uh, then you need to outsource those activities to manufacture the um, desired medicinal products. Sometimes you are overburdened with your own manufacturing unit, and you need to uh, you need to produce more medicine. So what can be done? It can be out licensed to the third party. There are organizations who are specialized in developing certain dosage forms, like soft gelatin capsule. So instead of establishing your own plan you create uh, you outsource it to the third party licensing merger and acquisition in licensing and out licensing uh, based on mark uh, to gain the market advantage to increase the reach or to start a new venture you collaborate or you uh, uh, sell out your wing of business to a person who is more doable who is well? Uh, who is more capable of doing this? So, having as we have discussed about uh, the juxtap uh, the project management and pharmaceutical affairs, uh, we need to understand that at what stages uh, this project management practices needs to be implemented uh, into the uh, pharmaceutical uh, affairs. So it can be implemented at every stage. It can be implemented at research stage. It can be implemented at the manufacturing stage. It can be implemented at commercial stage. It can be implemented at marketing stage. Uh, so why, why it is a juncture? Why it is not meeting exactly to the uh, pharmaceutical affairs where it has to meet? Why it is into juxtaposition? I mean, why it is aligning? Because pharmaceutical, uh, affairs are very unpredictable. Uh, it's constantly changing and it's very competitive. Uh, there are number of molecules in, that belongs to the same class. Tell me sartan, losartan. I mean, sartan class has wide range of molecules uh, within the same class. So it varies from person to person. It varies from uh, individual to individual. It varies from uh, practitioner to practitioner to choose out of these molecules. So uh, when you conceptualize to develop a new uh, molecule or you want to out license your activity to a third party, you need a project management team uh, at hand so that they can uh, govern at least these five qualities uh, so that uh, you can have a uh, 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 successful project execution. Uh, Madam, can we go back to the last slide, please? Yeah. So the five things that needs to be managed are timeline. Research, manufacturing, market sales and distribution or commercialization. Uh, 
needs to be ensured on time deliverance in a competitive market quality you cannot overlook a quality uh, and that has to be ensured by a project manager that what is been delivered to the third person is uh, is in line with what has been stated continuity the activity should not stop uh, a project if it is about to be completed or if it is about to be hindered it should not stop it should be continued if you are a contract researching a thing uh, then you should continue uh, you should continue budget pharmaceutical effects are cost sensitive so activity needs to be completed within the budget teamwork uh, project manager has to ensure that jargon of science finance and commerce uh, come together and deliver a quality projects yeah uh, next slide so why a juxta position nc or nb is goes from laboratory to clinical to phase 1 to phase 2 to phase 3 and all these phases requires timeline management budget management uh, activity management without getting involved and that is what project managers do so they don't get involved into these stages but they take out the information they streamline it and create a path uh, so that stakeholders can work on it and uh, make it a successful project and uh, yes so i'll conclude uh, that uh, project management is an, uh, nothing but a juxtaposition it is not an ownership of the project but it is alignment with the project to make it a success thank you so much for your attention thank you so much Thank you, thank you, Mr. Yash Patel. Uh, we have invited yeah. with the uh, new topics as the students of BPharm and FPharm are aware with the R&D and all, but uh, we don't have much idea regarding what project management is and uh, what is the actual thing that we have to do in that. And uh, we know that there is a large scope in project management as well as uh, supply chain and all. So thank you, uh, Mr. Yash. Yep. For uh, giving your valuable time, and uh, I will request our HOD, Dr. Vijay Prajapati, ma'am, to give vote of thanks. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, uh, it's my pleasure, madam. Thank you so much for inviting. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so uh, very well uh, uh, understood. Hello. 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 Hello, am I audible, sir? Yes, yes, ma'am. Now it's audible. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Actually, there is power cut at my place. Okay. So, okay. Uh, yes, you have uh, very well uh, given the uh, in pharmaceutical industry. It is very much useful for our PG program students, uh, basically. Thankful to you, sir, for uh, accepting our invitation for this uh, webinar. I am uh, uh, very much thankful to our Parul University Management for providing the uh, this uh, uh, online platform for the benefit of the students as well as the faculty members. And uh, I would also like to thank our few webinar team for uh, organizing uh, such kind of successful event. I'm also uh, thanking our Dean, Dr. Abhay Dharamsi, sir, uh, our Faculty of Pharmacy, for giving uh, uh, such kind of opportunities, uh, for organizing and inviting us uh, and uh, 
uh, it is the benefit of the students. <coughs> I would also like to thank our webinar coordinator, Mrs. Lima Patel, and uh, I am also thankful to Pankita Madam, Pankita Rede, for uh, inviting uh, uh, Mr. Yash Patel, sir. And at last, I would like to thank all the participants. Thank you very much, sir, for uh, actively uh, giving your talk. It is in our uh, benefit, of course. Yeah, thank you thank so much, Madam. Much. Thank, thank you, Madam. Yes, Lima, ma'am, over to you. Thank you so much, Mr. Yash Patel, for joining our uh, accepting our invitation and joining uh, on the webinar. Uh, can we close the link now? Yes, ma'am. Sure. Thank you.